Hello. My project advocates the, the use of the principles of permaculture for urban site design. As a horticulturist with over 32 years of experience, I'm passionate about our Earth's living cycles and biology. I choose to use the, the principles of permaculture and sustainability within my site design projects because I see our world deteriorating, largely due to poorly designed systems that create an abundance of waste while primarily serving the economy. Examples of these inadequately considered systems are industrialized waterways with, without water reclamation or, or filtration facilities, misguided energy sources that require the use of fossil fuels or hydro dams which cause damage to our environment, a food network so complicated that people have little understanding of where food comes from or where our waste goes. Respect and value for our biological processes will not only have an impact on our environment but also on our future generations. This means that it's no longer just about saving the dolphins or the polar bears. Revitalizing our natural resources now relates to delaying the extinction of humanity. My preferred user for the project lives in a low income, high density area and has, a, and has a, a, an annual household income of less than $40,000 per year. Diabetes and heart disease have become leading health issues in these areas as fresh food is difficult to find while inexpensive fast food is literally on every street corner. The site would need to have at least 10 acres of space and be situated to act as a buffer zone between industrial and residential areas. As, mo as most low-income communities have little access to healthy food or physical activities, improving community health is a primary objective. Human connection to biology can actually help to extend and improve the quality of life. Human population dwarfing the natural resources needed for support is a major cause of urban blight and suffering. The program goals of Cooperative Gardens, Urban Forest, Natural Resource Re Regeneration and Community Centre will provide a needed canvas for healthier living as well as an educational facility. The location I chose is on the west bank of the Los Angeles River between the cities of Maywood and Vernon and is the formerly the site of Thermidor Electric Manufacturing. Maywood Elementary School connects directly to the site through a pedestrian bridge. Maywood has a documented population of over 23,000 people and a land area of approximately one square mile, while Vernon has the population of just 114 and a land area of five square miles. The average annual household income of the Maywood user is predominantly under $30,000 per year. The scale of industrial development as contrasted to the residential community is overwhelming. Water reservoirs and aquifers in the area have been contaminated, forcing residents to use a privatized water distribution service. To access the river, the residents of Maywood must now cross through industrialized areas. One of the project goals will be to, to, ac will be to create access to the river for the, for the residents of Maywood. <clears throat> the Thermidor site is currently under remediation by the Toxic Substances Control Board. Maywood Elementary School, directly across from the site, is in need of more space. The rail spur is not in use, but is an important amenity to the industrial properties. Rail spurs are pervasive in the area and often take precedence over any type of construction. The area near the site at the Los Angeles River has an abundance of wildlife. A variety of birds and plant life can be found on most days. An important segment of the learning, the learning experience is to provide an atmosphere for observation while concurrently preventing damage to the vital riparian ecosystem. All of the communities surrounding Vernon suffer from a low tree to building ratio with special consideration given to the circumstance of five miles of industry as opposed to one mile of very dense population. Here is shown how many schools in the area can benefit from such an installation. A one in five mile radius was taken for local children from these predominantly disadvantaged communities to visit the facility and benefit from the eco-learning atmosphere. This includes schools in the east side area of Los Angeles and others to the south as far as Wilmington. It's apparent that within Maywood, the, mo the one mile radius, that just one tiny park exists for 23,000 plus people. The Thermidor plant operated from 1946 through 2001 and was demolished in 2008. The site is presently under remediation for chlorinated solvents used in the metal fabrication process. The plant was a shining example of how industry has created and shaped the small towns in this area. Maywood Elementary School, designed by Gensler Architects, was built in 2005. The pedestrian bridge is used exclusively for the students. The students are corralled twice daily and wrangled back and forth across the bridge to be picked up and dropped off for school. <clears throat> Permaculture is the philosophy of working with rather than against nature. It's about designing human settlements while preserving and extending natural systems. 
I chose this set of tools as a response to the contaminated conditions of the site, the congested state of the community, and to help form a setting in which children and adults can learn about the human responsibility in caring for our environment. When we evaluate the interaction between biological elements and humans, we can see how all of the truly needed commodities of life come from our interdependence with biological elements. Conveying this information to our next generation is a pivotal first step towards restoring a stability to up that is necessary to sustain life. Recognizing the symbiosis when designing open space will create healthier communities. Early on, I chose to use zoning as a tool to establish the program elements within each natural resource area. This promotes thoughtful symbiotic adjacencies, inspires cooperation, and implements the philosophies of permaculture. The program elements have been positioned within the zones that they benefit most from. Each zone has its own character and influence on the community. Here, I position the elements as they are represented on the site. You can see that in each area where two or more elements intersect, a needed commodity is created. Geometry organizes the universe. A spiral was used in this graphic to chronicle the ev evolution of life on Earth. From the beginning of bacterial life in the ocean to imagery within the tree of life symbol, a spiral pattern emerges. The tree of life is an imaginary branching structure representing the evolutionary divergence of all living creatures. Through my research, I came to appreciate that Thermidor was also in the business of making coils. The occurrence of circles and, and curls used on an axis within the products is persuasive enough to demand use within the design structure. Other forms of industrial geometry, likewise, illustrate how circles and spirals are organized on a grid or axis point. Upward and downward motion is achieved in the contouring of the land. Helixes can direct protrusions and depressions in, in topography. Spiraling lines can create circulation options and the opportunity for gravity-fed water movement. At the Getty Center Central Garden and the Ga Garden of Cosmic Spe Speculation, we see two examples of this, the use of this type of geometry in site design. The tree of life symbol in conjunction with spirals is commonly used as an insignia for permaculture. Since there has not been one tree on the site in over 70 years, not one tree, it's appropriate that a tree be used as part of the design metaphor. For this reason, I decided to use the tree of life with spiraling branches as a circulation pattern. The crossing point at District Boulevard and the rail spur is significant because it has historically been the point of access for the Thermidor facility and is also the point at which, at which the residents can access the river. Rail spurs are considered vital assets to industry. They often cut directly through buildings taking precedence. Therefore, the spur should be left in place as a symbol of industry and natural systems working cooperatively. The geometry of the community fabric reveals three major lines. One line represents Maywood Elementary and runs directly east and west. The second line runs along the river and with the community plan itself. The third line runs through the heart of the old facility and aligns with Atlantic Boulevard. The axis of the three will be the heart of the community center as well as the starting point for the water remediation features within the site. A preliminary circulation diagram shows how the urban fabric below the tree crown takes on a more rectilinear form, while the crown, being the community center, is a transitional point symbolizing change. Beyond the crown is the tree of life trunk, which makes for the principal circulation route. The tree of life branches lead subsequently to spiral formed areas where the program elements are contained. Secondary pathways representing the water cycle join all of the zones together. This is the final schematic plan. The urban interface and routes of the space connect back to the community and school. The circulation pathways separate the buildings at the community center. A trellis structure in the courtyard symbolizes change and marks a point where the view opens up to the river area and windmills. At the point of the community center courtyard, the design style changes to a more fluid approach and the circulation becomes the trunk and branches of the tree of life. Secondary circulation connecting the elements from the outside path represent the water cycle flowing through all elements of air, water and earth. Photovoltaic tiles at the sun point and the wind forest near the river provide energy for all of the site functions. Excess energy is to be shared with the school. Reclaimed water is used as a predominant feature throughout the site. The reclaimed water fil with filtration facility is viewable for educational purposes. Custom water towers provide gateway elements as well as storage and remediating function. Water is used and filtered three times before being returned to the source. Viewpoints are created from the pedestrian bridges which connect the site to the river and from the grassy spiraling hill point. 
The composting area, food forest, cooperative gardens and hen house are situated logically at the centre of the site together to maximise the use of resources. The area near the site was historically a riparian stream and floodplain. Expanding the river at the other side where the land is not in use will make a meandering course while still providing the needed amount of space for a 100 year storm event. Additionally, a meandering channel will connect design-wise with other projects being considered along the Los Angeles River. A long hot shower is actually good for the environment when, wa when water is reclaimed, heated with solar or wind power and filtered back through the ground to natural aquifers. It may seem counterintuitive to many that irrigation and evapotranspiration are actually very beneficial to our atmosphere when reclaimed wastewater is used. The water reclamation network will produce water for irrigation and toilet flushing use. The site water will filter through all of the planted systems and drain to the Weeping Rock area where it will be subsequently used again for irrigation at the river and filtered, filtered from the riparian roots back into the river, utilized, improved upon and respected. My Weeping Rock concept is a low point drainage sump which collects the site drainage water sending it to the riparian planting at the river edge. The spiraling hollow formation takes users onto a journey into a moist and cool atmosphere where water seeps through the rocks, making its way to the center. And here's a perspective of that from the viewpoint. <coughs> My basalt rock hill concept is a, is a passive recreation element, which is inspired by the Devil's Post Pile, a familiar California icon. And here's another perspective of that from the other side. Maywood Elementary School will have an improved bridge landing point with benches and landscape that coincide with the park's design. A paving pattern and crosswalk will be placed to facilitate safety crossing East 52nd Drive. This is shown on the main site plan. The community center entrance has rectilinear lines that relate back to the urban fabric. The remediating water features provide a pleasant retreat for the community. Benches and shady spots create a haven for otherwise shut in people. This is the food forest, where children can learn that it's possible to glean food from nature. Wooden pontoons are used to protect the soil community, an important guild that helps us to grow our food. The cooperative gardens make up a total of two acres. Community members can lease a spot and take eco-workshop classes offered at the center to learn more about growing food. The mandala-like design is relevant to permaculture and is directly derived from Thermidor products. The wind forest at the river uses special wind turbine trees. They produce a similar amount of energy to larger windmills and are a fun way for kids to learn about alternative energy. This is a section of the terraces and the pedestrian bridge, look, bridge lookout. The ADA access is at the ground level and provides a similar experiences, experience on the terraces. Also shown is the opposite side of the river where the basin expansion can take place. This is a lookout point to the wind forest. This would be one of several talk spots where, where docents of the campus could bring groups of children to explain how alternative energy works. And finally, this is my perspective of the entire campus where you can see the goals achieved of community center, cooperative gardens, renewed resources, and eco-education. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.